رمضان تجلى وابتسم طوبى للعبد إذا تنمى What is scholarly opinion on moon sighting? Should countries follow astronomical calculations by scientists or rely on sighting the moon by sight? Where does the following hadith stand in this era? Fast when you see the new moon of Ramadan and break your fast when you see the new moon of Shawwal. If clouds prevent you from seeing it, complete 30 days in the month of Sha'ban. This is an issue of dispute among scholars. And Allah directed us in chapter 4, Surah An-Nisa, when he said, فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولُ Whenever you dispute over a matter, then you have to refer back to Allah and the Messenger, meaning to Quran and to the Sunnah. So what does the Quran and Sunnah say about this? As you've heard in the Hadith, the Prophet said, Sumu li ru'yatihi. Fast when you see the crescent, the new moon. And break your fast at the end of the month of Ramadan when you see it, when you sight the new moon or the crescent. So this is the instruction of the Prophet ﷺ. He clearly directed us to visually see it. So this means that the calculations of people who work in astronomy, when they say that the new moon is born on that particular day and impossible to be born on that day, should we believe them? Or two witnesses who come and say, we visually saw it. The most authentic opinion is that Islam is a religion of simplicity. And we have to rely on something that is visual. So even if I use a telescope and I sight the moon and I see it, it's okay because I saw it with my own eyes. But to claim that according to calculations, today the new, the new moon is born and I look and it's all cloudy, it's dusty, there's a storm, there's no possible way to visually sight the moon. Should I fast tomorrow or skip it and consider it to be a day of not fasting? The answer is calculation is disregarded. In order to prove the crime of adultery and fornication, we need a confession from the sinner, the adulteress, or the fornicator, or we need four male Muslim witnesses testifying of seeing the actual act of penetration and describing it. This is the Sharia law that was at the time of the Prophet ﷺ and will remain until the Day of Judgment. If someone comes and says, Shaykh, we have three cameras, we have five cameras, HD, high def, 16K or whatever the numbers they have. Maybe they did not reach 16, I don't know. So we have the footage. Is this sufficient? The answer is no. There have there has to be four male Muslim witnesses visualizing it. So this is the Sharia law. It is not something that we make up or we think that, oh, okay, we have DNA testing. This is enough. No, it's not enough. It can be circumstantial evidences that a judge may use, but it is not sufficient on its own. Therefore, it, the citing has to be done. Now, the one million Kuwaiti dinar question. Do we have one sighting for the whole world of the Muslims? Or there are various sightings according to the region. 
The most authentic opinion, and this is what was done at the time of the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, and referred to the Prophet ﷺ, that each region has its own sighting. A man came from Asham, which is nowadays Syria, from Damascus, where the Khalifa, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, was there. He came after the month of Ramadan entered. When he reached Mecca or Medina, Ibn Abbas asked them, when did you see the crescent? And he said, Saturday. So Ibn Abbas said, we saw it on Sunday. So the man asked, should we unify? Should you also consider Ramadan beginning at Saturday? He said, no. The Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to apply and implement each one's own sighting. And this is what's being practiced today. People in India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, they have their own sighting. People in the Gulf area in the Arabian Peninsula have their own sighting. People in Egypt have their own sighting. People in Morocco, people in Europe, people in USA have their own sighting. One says, Akhi, but this divides the Ummah. When their Eid is on Saturday, my Eid is on Sunday, their Eid is on a Monday. The Ummah is divided. Akhi, this is not true. This does not divide the Ummah. When they pray Fajr, do I pray Fajr at the same time? So no, there are three hours difference. When I pray Fajr, do they pray Fajr in the USA? So no, there's eight hours difference. So where is the division of the Ummah? He says, okay, gotcha. On Hajj. Arafah is on a Wednesday. So should Muslims in America fast on Wednesday as well? The answer is no. He said, excuse me? I said, the answer is no. Read my lips. Wednesday is the ninth of the Hijjah in Saudi Arabia, in Mecca. We sighted the crescent, the moon, and we know that it's a Wednesday. Now, you guys in America or in India, your Arafah is the ninth of the Hijjah, which means that you have to sight the moon in the beginning of the month. So if it coincides with our sighting, Alhamdulillah, it's Wednesday. But if it's an earlier date or a later date, then it might be Tuesday, it might be Thursday. Sheikh, but it's Arafah. It's not Arafah that Hajjis stand in the Mount of, of Arafat, except to those who are in Saudi Arabia. But for you guys in America, it's the ninth of the Hijjah. It's not the day of Arafah. The ninth of the Hijjah depends on when you see the newborn uh, uh, moon, not like ours.